There are 12 steps in the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, the first step is the minute we were powerless over alcohol and our life was unmanageable. I never, <laughs> I got, you know, it's still a problem. <laughs> oh, I still have lots of, I'm, you know, I'm wildly imperfect, mm. still am. And that's, but that's the, that's the beauty of it, being wild, because right. if we were all perfect, it wouldn't be worth being here, you right. know? I mean, that's what, that's the, that's the goodness of it, is our imperfections. But anyway, so I got this, realized that, we, that I was powerless over alcohol. That was a no-brainer. I saw that when I went to treatment. I saw that, and I said, wow. That's the deal, and I never had, I couldn't drink like anybody else, but I had never switched that to that I was powerless over it. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is B. Reeves. I'm the Director of Business Development here at New Waters Recovery I'm with my colleague and friend, Thomas Hogshead, who is our Director of Admissions and Director of Operations, and our good friend, Bob Goodell here, who uh, is a local, I'd say more than a local legend in the recovery community. Um, and I've got a partial bio of Bob that I'm going to read just to get us started. Um, and this is from his, the Board of is, is a member of the Board of Trustees from Healing Transitions. Bob Goodell is a former Harris Teeter CEO and former NC Deputy Secretary of Commerce. In addition to his past service on the Healing Transitions Board of Directors and current service on the Board of Trustees, Bob serves on the Board of Directors of Pivot Point, WNC, Pavilion, and the Alcohol and Drug Council of North Carolina, where he also served as president he previously served on the Hanley Hazelden Foundation Board of Directors, Hazelden National Advisory Committee, Hazelden New York City Advisory Board, North Carolina Department of Corrections Substance Abuse Advisory Board, Rebound Charlotte Board of Directors, wow. Amethyst Foundation, Chairman of the Board, and the Charlotte Treatment Center Board of Directors and Capital Campaign Chairman. Bob served in the Army after receiving a BS degree from Iowa State University. He also received an MBA from the University of Kansas. Bob is a recipient of the Order of the Longleaf Pine. His other honors include the Trotter Black Award, Hope Haven Charlotte for his unique contributions in the field of recovery, and the Order of the Hornet Mecklenburg County, North Carolina Board of, Co of County Commissioner's Highest Award, uh, Bob's story of addiction and recovery is told in Second Chances by Gary Stromberg. Um, welcome, Bob. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we are so glad to have yeah, you and be talking you, to you today. This is a real treat. Wow, that's long. <laughs> well, what's happened since then? What have you been up to? <laughs> well, that went back to, uh, golly, a long ways. Yeah. yeah, too long. I wrote it. Yeah, well, get that. It's good to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. Great to be here, B. Great to be here, Thomas. Well, uh, tell us a little bit just about how you found yourself in the world of recovery. What, what you know, kind of, we talk about what we, what we were like, what happened and what we're like now, you know, give us a little yeah, bit. Well, the, the, big, the, the, the big thing is, is it, all those, all that stuff about, you know, what I did professionally. And, uh, but uh, the, the biggest thing that happened to me is I stopped drinking in 1972. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. I don't say I got sober, by the way, because nobody gets sober on their first day. I say I stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. And because, um, you know, I began to get really emotionally sober is what it's about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll, I just want to start there because that's that's the big deal. I agree. Being emotional. And, and I didn't begin to find that maybe for 20 years. Wow. Uh, we'll talk about that maybe some. But, uh, yeah, I, I had to stop because I couldn't quit. And... Um, um, it, was, it is hilarious, as we know, the start stories. <laughs> uh, I, I, um, I was, uh, I was just, you know, falling downwards. I was spiritually, I was bankrupt in every way except financially. And, uh, 
I um, it was it was it was getting worse and worse. And um, I um, as president of PTA, or, you know, my wife and I are, were president of PTA, and I was just out there, you know. So um, I um, wanted to um, I wanted to see the bishop because I had problems, and then rather than go to my, you know, Episcopal parish priest, I went to see the bishop, and I said that I had a couple of things I want to talk to him about. So over lunch in Omaha, they're one of their finest steakhouses. Uh, I said I had two problems: one was problems with my marriage, and the other. The other was uh, that I couldn't drink like other people. And over three martinis apiece, we agreed that we would work on the marriage first. <laughs> <laughs> Six months later, after running the car off a road in Omaha, flames burnt, you know, in Stubblefield. Late at night or early in the morning, uh, flames all around the car. Um, and uh, ran off the uh, fire department came, ran off again. I called him up and I said, I got to do something. He said, Place just opened up here in Omaha, and um, he says I'll call him. And uh, so down I went. I was number seven. The bishop was number forty-six. Wow. And that's how it began. Wow. I thought it was about not drinking. Right. See, I thought it was about not drinking. So I was a two-stepper mm. for a long time. And it's uh, and so um, I was. I know what being restless, irritable, and discontented is. And the closer you were to me, the more you knew that. You wouldn't have known it otherwise. Uh, but, um, um, and uh, I just was, I was too stubborn. What changed I, 20 years in of, would you say you were a dry, junk, dry drunk well, for 20 course, years? Of course, yeah. 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 What, what changed? I know the difference. Yeah. Uh, the, well, it was that um, I, I got lucky and was just figured out figured out, it was presented to me that success was not about power and money. Mm. Wow. How long till you found a sponsor, Bob? Well, I got, well, I'm, I got a sponsor. I began, when I became CEO of Harris Teeter, I thought that, I thought that would fix me, by the way. Mm. I thought, because that's what I aspired to. And it didn't. That day was not a good day. <laughs> so the next day I found myself going to I mean, the Randolph Clinic in, in Charlotte. And um, I knew when I walked in, like we hear all the time, you know, that's where I needed to be. And while I would check in periodically. Whenever we moved around, I'd check in to meet him. But, you know, and so I, um, I um, started to go and go to meetings. And, and I got a sponsor, but, you know, I got, I got a friend. We would, never, we would have coffee, and, mm -hmm. you know. There are sponsors and there are sponsors. So... Uh, and so um, I got a sponsor, and I started going to, uh, you know, started showing up. And that was uh, 85, so that was uh, 13 years in or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, But then I, um, I um, so I started, I started showing up. Osmosis was occurring, I'll say. You know, I was showing up. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so part of my two steps, it was really two and a fraction, you know, Half of the first and all the second, uh, middle third of the twelfth, and mm -hmm. half of the eleventh, and some of that stuff. Uh, and um, will you uh, explain though in further detail what the two step two stepping means? Oh to yeah, people sure. Who don't know the difference. Well, so um, there are twelve steps in the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, the first step is the minute we were powerless over alcohol. And our life was unmanageable. I never, I got, you know, that's still a problem. <laughs> I still have lots of, I'm, you know, I'm wildly imperfect. Mm. Still am. And that's, but that's the, that's the beauty of it, being wild. Because right. if we were all perfect, it wouldn't be worth being here, you right. know? I mean, that's what, that's the, that's the goodness of it is our imperfections. But anyway. So I got this, realized that, we, that I was powerless over alcohol. That was a no-brainer. I saw that when I went to treatment. I saw that, and I said, wow, that's the deal. And I never had, and I couldn't drink like anybody else, but I had never switched that to that I was powerless over it. I wanted to drink like other people. I wanted advice on how to do that or what to do about it. So I got that, and uh, uh, and the second step is um, um, 
can believe that only a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity, and I was nuts. <laughs> I was crazy. I mean, it was bad crazy. Well, I was good crazy, but, yeah. but too much bad crazy. Oh, wow. Was I bad? And, uh, and when I saw that, I said, ooh, yes. So those were the, that's the kind of a step and a half, if you will, mm -hmm. but we call that the first two steps mm -hmm. and don't go on from there. And so if we don't get into um, the spiritual part, you know, uh, 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 and if we don't get into examining our character <laughs> defects and, uh, and, and working the rest of the steps, then we are stuck at being dry. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's not a good, I mean, it's a, it's a better place to be because you, I, I stayed, what I did is I stayed dry long enough to begin to get sober. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the deal. And I was, I was, I wasn't going to pick up. It was that was never an issue because I was, because I, the consequences mm -hmm. were, you know, i I missed the decade of the 60s. I knew that. <laughs> so I'm still trying to catch up. So, so that was, um, that's, that's the whole deal. It's not, you know, it, it, sobriety is different than abstinence. And I know the difference. And boy, is it something else. It's unbelievable. And it, get, it keeps getting better. I'm 90 years old, <laughs> and it keeps getting better. So uh, I mean, if, th if there's an example of someone living his life to the fullest, I, I would point to you. Yeah, I mean, Bob's zest for life, it's, <laughs> it's contagious. You know, the, the, the people that know you in the recovery community, you are, you are revered, you're a champion, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Well, it is. It's, yeah, it is. So it you, is. In the, I've known you just for a few years, yep. and in the few years I've known you, I've seen you. I haven't seen you do it in person, but I've seen pictures and video of you doing it. So you've repelled. Tell us what you've done with the repelling down the well. Park, you know, so the this, so the whole thing was um, um, just realizing you know, that look, I'm wildly imperfect, but I'm also happy, joyous, and free, and that's mm -hmm. the result of yes being emotionally sober, yeah. increasingly emotionally sober. I've been periods, right. you know, of course, but it's far from that. Mm. You know, I'm sad. Uh, but um, when I say, you know, moments. Even though you were very successful in business, and even in, for a period you were dry, not drinking, but you were still unable to be present even without the drink because of your, because your, because of the ism was still Well, cooking. yeah, I mean, well, I, I was, I was not, I mean, let's say the, the potential, mm -hmm. you know, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Found out what I found out what to do by finding out what not to do. Mm. Found out what worked by finding out what didn't work. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to stay dry long enough. So I say to everybody, don't do what I did. Mm. Don't wait. Work on the work on emotional sobriety. It's not just about not drinking, not using, because life is unbelievable. When yeah. you when you um, when you're able to live it to its fullest, I was uh, six months sober, and I was in New York, and I went to the same meeting every day. This place called Perry Street Workshop, and I heard a different person every day say this over three days. I came for my drinking, I stayed for my thinking, and that I think that totally sums it up for me. Of all the cliches and slogans we hear in recovery, that to me is what it's all about. And my thinking is my emotional sobriety. That's right. You know, yeah. Yeah, I think about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you seen um, from somebody who's been around 50 years, in, interested in recovery, been to a lot of meetings, you've been on the board board of several treatment centers. What do you what do you see as how things have changed for the good, for the bad? What do you, what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on the treatment landscape, not just recovery itself, but specifically treatment? Well, there's <clears throat> When I so comparing it to uh, so I have to compare it to 1972, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's light years different than it is now. And it's going to be light years different 
50 years from now. It's moving in that direction. So, so I, I, so I went, I went to treatment. It was a 28 day program. They kept me for six weeks. I'm sure that they thought when they, you know, finally said that I'd be back or, you know, I'd be out or one way or the other, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because they knew enough about what I was hiding. Mm -hmm. uh, was, so they knew I was hiding. That's it. They mm -hmm. didn't know about what I was hiding. And uh, um, uh, and so there wasn't any, there wasn't any, um, you know, get a sponsor. It was the obligatory fourth and fifth. Mm -hmm. And my uh, obligatory fourth, you know, all I wanted to do was head right to the, um, um, to go home and have an admitting fit. You know, change the lives of others mm -hmm. forever, and uh, so, um, uh, so so that's I, I just hopped right to that um, to make an amends. Except when, but I didn't read that. Except when to do so, it injured there by others. You see, <laughs> I, 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 I like I, 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 the, the the words like exact and all. And, it, you know, and the other part of it, like ma my life was unmanageable. I didn't, I, all I got was I was powerless over alcohol. So I, I be, well, why would I? I didn't have a sponsor to direct me. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't led that way. I wasn't, we weren't taking any meetings or anything like that. So that's, and of course, it's a lot different now. Who would have believed, for example, that anything like New Waters? Yeah. I mean, please, you know, that's. That wasn't even a dream. No. In, in that light, like working with others, Bob, like I, I met you back in 2008 through uh, the late, great Fred Barber and your ability to work with others at Healing Transitions and, and those men and those women is so profound that uh, your impact on them. Um, you still go down there quite a bit and... It's much, well, I, it'll never be often enough. <laughs> uh, I have, I have, I've always had... I've always liked to have um, uh, friends who didn't um, think like me, um, look like me, um, some talk like me, mm. and 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 I I mean this. I'm like I've traveled. I've I've had an opportunity to go to places or smell like me. Always had a, a <laughs> big. That's why I'm so drawn to you guys. <laughs> 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 anyway, so uh, uh, but you don't have to go. You don't have to travel far. I mean, it's uh, it's it's just I just cannot because the, the, the miracles that you see. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that you see that you're involved in, that you witness, that you're part of, uh, that sometimes happen to you. They're just it's just an avalanche, and that's where. I just so it's part of being happy, joyous, and free. As you can do, as I can do that. And yeah, and what you said about people not don't look like me. I mean, I I remember when I first found, got home from treatment and was going to meetings, and I would see somebody who walked in and looked like he's about my age and kind of dressed like me and looked like me, and I'd be like, oh, that guy will be my new best buddy in mm -hmm. in recovery, and what, you know, and it was pretty rare that that person I had anything in common. And then I would, you know, be in a meeting and hear like a, you know, an old lady who was a crackhead and she would say something that I related to more than anything I'd ever heard in my life. You know, and it's a great example of, you know, uh, identifying with instead of comparing to and and that it tra this transcends everything, you know. Well, I, I call it that, that I just get more, more and more material, mm. not necessarily material to, uh, you know, to relate to all those, you know, but just. Just um, uh, I, 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 I sometimes, not often, I'll be in a place and I'll, I will, and the other day, as a matter of fact, right over, not far from here, um, at Costco, I was picking up some water and I met a guy who helped me a lot, uh, who works there, Ben, and we started laughing and, and uh, so I was in, sitting in the car and I was laughing. And then uh, and the laugh broke into a cry because I realized how lucky, how is this possible? 
How is it possible? It happens to me all the time. Yeah. It's just be, you know, I, I, I'm able to go out in, in places that I never would have imagined <laughs> even five years ago that I'd be. Uh, sometimes it's a homeless camp. Uh, and I'm and I'm uh, and I'm witnessing unconditional love, and I'm saying to myself, "How the hell? How is this? How is this possible mm. that I'm here?" And it's um, it's very moving to me. And so because so it's it's like you want more of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, yeah. Having uh, seen that in action, Bob, people do gravitate towards you in meetings and social settings. I think, I think your laughter is a big part of that. Well, that's genetic. I, I, I can go back to. I, I didn't know my grandfather. He died when I, but I, but he was, but he was a storyteller. And then I had an aunt that. So I mean, so that's, that's. Um, uh, but it just is because it's it's. Um, it's just it's a great way to be. I, I know the exact feeling you're talking about, the, the part laugh, part cry. I never experienced it until uh, sub recovery, you know, sobriety, where of course. I was driving on January 2nd of, I think, 2020. And I was a year and a half sober. I was driving to work after I've been trying to lose. I've been losing weight for about a year and a half since I got sober. And I was determined to get to below 200 pounds. And on New Year's Day, I woke up and I weighed exactly 200 pounds. So close, I was shaving and blowing my nose and <laughs> trying to lose 0.1 pound and just mocking me. It's still at 200 pounds. So the next day I had to be at work and I was going to the gym every morning, driving in the dark. And I got up on January 2nd to drive to, to, drive to work, to go to the gym at my office and then go to work. And I got, I woke up and I weighed 199.1. And I just thought, yes. And then I got in the car to drive out there, driving in the dark on I-40 on January 2nd. Nobody's on the road and just broke down in total tears, but also laughing at the same time. It was what I could only describe as pure joy and the joy of living. And it wasn't just that I had gotten to this weight loss goal, but it was everything that how my life had completely changed. And it was all due to the 12 steps. Yeah. Well, so, so speaking of exercise, so... Uh, uh, I I was in Charlotte and I was you know I was restless, irritable, and discontented. My wife recognized that, and so I was doing a. I, I'd been a gym rat growing up, and uh, uh, so here it is, um, twenty years later, uh, and uh, uh, well, it's almost thirty years later. And my wife uh, made an appointment for me down at the Charlotte Y, and. Uh, uh, I, that's where I discovered endorphins. Oh, oh <laughs> man. So I'd go in the morning and I'd go at night. And so here I was, you know, this, uh, this, <laughs> this uh, CEO of Harris Teeter, we, we moved our office down, you know, uh, down, no, I don't know, no, Charlotte. But anyway, it was, it was about... 20 minutes from downtown, maybe 25 from the center, from the downtown line. That's where I went. So I would leave work dressed like you did in the, you know, in the eighties, I would leave work. Um, and, um, and I would arrive absolutely ready to go to the six o'clock class. In other words, for a person this time on the busiest street in Charlotte, North Carolina, I was naked. Ah, this is part. Of, this is part of still being crazy, you know. I, I was too. I was a good, good kind. Of, well, maybe good kind of crazy. It was, oh. but that's that's endorphin. So I'm still, yeah. you know, I'm a gym rat, mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, it continued to be. Yeah, I still love those endorphins. So I yeah. agree. Um, Bob, clearly you've been influential on many. Um, who could you share with us that has been deeply influential on yourself? Oh, Fred Barber, you yeah. know, sure. And Fred Barber. And Fred yeah. was uh, uh, instrumental in founding Healing Transitions. Yeah, Fred, Fred Barber. Um, and so I have lots of um, um, folks that I, that I want to pay attention to. I mean, I go to, I go to, Two, three, sometimes four meetings a week still do, and I go, you know, because I'm 
it's a community of friends. Mm -hmm. And I go because I'm going, you know, it's, I'm always going to pick up something. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so I have a number of folks, um, uh, who, um, are important to me, Mm -hmm. uh, in the community who are, you know, in recovery, um, that, um, um, so it's 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 a pretty long list, but I can I can look back at Fred. I feel him tapping on my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> often, and I like that. I like that. It's kind it's of what it's kind it's of what would you know? What, well, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard this way more than I or Thomas or anybody. But you know, when people I don't get asked this much, but I feel like this is one of those kind of legends we hear about in A or, or, or stories that like a youth or a, uh, anecdote. Um, you still going to those meetings? You still need to go to those, those meetings? <laughs> and, you know, you're nine years old, 50 plus years sober, and you're still going. I mean, that, that's just testament to we don't have to go. We get to go because we love going, you know. What, what better to do, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, it's um, anyway, it's, um, it's pretty special. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, tell, we saw some video of you flying a plane recently. Will you tell us about that? Well, yes. I, uh, I had an opportunity on the 21st of December to uh, uh, go to Norfolk uh, with a, uh, uh, a friend uh, who um, uh, his daughter, and I went with the daughter, too, is a uh, um, third year at the Air Force Academy. And for a, for her Christmas present, her parents had given her uh, this opportunity to um, um, to go to fly one of these. And she fly. She had her pilot's license before she had her driver's license. Hmm. And she's going to be a pilot. So the question: Her dad, who's a, who's also a pilot, uh, uh, and she's going to be a fighter pilot. You know that right away. But she has to choose between fighters and bombers. That this would be a good experience because he did it as part of his training. And uh, re- recently, and so what? This this is an airplane that's uh, built for for acrobatics. It only weighs thirteen hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> Think about this. Powered by a three hundred hertz horsepower motor. There's a front seat and a back seat, and a canopy that you could that that's as clean as any canopy you can imagine. And uh, and so we get there's an hour briefing, and then she's going up for an hour. And so I on the so he couldn't go. He couldn't take her in their plane. I said, "Well, I will." We live near Charlotte. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, and, and you don't have to take her; she can take herself, but just to be with her. Mm-hmm. And then it occurred to me he couldn't go, and then he couldn't, uh, and so that I was going to do that. That uh, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go on the second day. I was thinking about it. I said, "Well, I want to go." <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, uh, and so, uh, I asked them, and they said, "Sure." Well, it turned out that the I want to go was just flying there in their plane because there's just two seats. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that was a bit bit of a disappointment, but I didn't say anything, but she's up for, she's, I mean, she's going to go the whole, the whole hour. I mean, we're talking about stalls and loop-de-loops and Mm -hmm. flying upside down, all the things that you see at air shows. And uh, uh, her dad said, do you want to go up? Of course, I said, absolutely. <laughs> I want that adrenaline, you know. <laughs> and so uh, so up we went. And so, uh, 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 and I had the stick. Uh, so I was in the front and he was in the back, had a parachute on, by the way. Really? And they give you, that's part of the drill. Take everything out of your pockets like you do when you go. When you go to the fair, <laughs> and uh, and away and away we went, and he said, "Now take the stick." So I'm, you know, <laughs> so I got the stick, and he said, "All right, because we're going to do barrel rolls." Jesus. And uh, so we did two barrel rolls, and I'm howling and shouting, you know, all the time because it was unbelievable. And uh, they, so, so they uh, asked for <laughs> when. It, so there's a video that which yeah, you've yeah. seen. And and so they said, they asked for permission to use that in their social media. <laughs> nice. Of course I got that. Yeah. So it was, but that's the, that's the part of the deal, being happy, yeah. joyous, and free, and being, being you know, uh, being interested in, yeah. um, in, a, in adventure and, you know, not being 
crazy about it, mm -hmm. I guess, but maybe. Uh, and also, it's just to show that it's 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 it's, it's too maybe not maybe, but a mission to show that being old doesn't mean that you just have to mildew. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, if you want to build birdhouses, that's fine, <laughs> or do puzzles, that's fine. But if you know, the, the, and we, so it's, it's an example, like at the gym. Um, you know, I do, I can do stuff that's, you know, get on a bosu ball. Uh, that's kind of unusual, but it's because I can. Mm -hmm. That's part of being happy, joyous, and free is to find out what you can do and what works. Mm -hmm. So anyway. That's, that's awesome. So, Bob, is there anything on the bucket list uh, yeah. that remains that we should be uh, aware of upcoming? So. People, I get asked every once in a while, what's on your bucket list? And my answer is tomorrow. Right on. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's a great answer. Sometimes. One day at a time, we can get through today, then there's tomorrow. Some folks... Some folks ask me, well, you know, how'd you do it? You know, and yeah. I say, why well, didn't I? Yeah, I've heard you. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is that, you know, I did. So, so just to recap here, <laughs> that it's not about just being dry. Right. Just quitting. Just, you know, is, is that's just, that's not, it, it is a beginning. The wonderful part of it is, is to embrace something like the 12 Steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and its brethren and embrace seeking uh, emotional sobriety, understanding the spiritual nature of recovery mm -hmm. and, uh, and embracing it and learning and growing in it. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. Don't stop at just quitting yeah. Just stopping. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we're deeply fortunate in the Raleigh area to have so many meetings, to have so many treatment facilities, to have so many um, people that are doing the deal and inspirational to the to the newcomer. It's it's just a, there's just a, re, a, 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 com, a community uh, or communities of of um, of folks that uh, you know. One thing that I like stick with the winners. Yeah, there are lots of winners. Yeah. yeah, and that's part of you know we talked about before, folks. Man, I wanna I wanna be I wanna listen, I wanna be next to. I, I go I, I go to I'll go to a sweat lodge tonight, and there's there are people there that I want that I don't see otherwise yeah. that I want to sit next to, mm -hmm. just because they're fun, mm -hmm. and they. Teach me, uh, they teach me to think about things and say things that I have never thought about before. <laughs> and um, that's something else. I mean, I love to hear that. I mean, at 90 years old, he's still out seeking <laughs> and learning and, and wanting to learn. It's, it's, I, this is your, yeah. your oh, we're not here just to blow your boat. This is, oh, no. you have no idea how inspiring this is. It is. See me in a sweat lodge. I need so much help no, even getting in. Even well, getting I don't want to see any video of that. Even to the just like we talk, talking about before. <laughs> you know, people say to me, oh, you don't look like you're 90. I say, well, you watch me walk. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Um, well, this has been great, yeah. Bob. I, I think it would be nice in closing. Um, if a newcomer came up to you today in a meeting, you know, and he said, Bob, I need help. It's, I'm in early recovery and I'm, I'm struggling. Well, what words of wisdom would you share with him that, uh, well, tell my experience, strength and hope. That's what we're supposed to do. But, you know, uh, uh, it's, um, you're never going to be lied to, you know? Uh, come join us uh, mm. and stick and just and, and also I always always want to um, uh, have a have a depth of a conversation. It doesn't have to be, you know, terribly long. Mm. When I say terribly long, I mean it can be three or four minutes to be able to look someone in the eye and tell them I love them mm. and um, give them a hug. 
and you can't beat that. You well, we can't. love you, Bob. We do love you, Bob. Uh, we do. The community loves love you. Guys, sir, thanks. <laughs> Thank fun. you so much for doing it. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. We're better off with you than we are without you. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a treat. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you so Thank much. You.